And yet, no matter where you are, home is never far away. Yes, today this exciting world, filled with romance, adventure, and nature's masterpieces, is waiting for you to enjoy. Hello, this is Phil Archer, Deputy Director at Rinalda House. In March, the museum was given a portrait of J. Edward Johnston, teacher, soldier, businessman, and the second husband of Rinalda's founder, Catherine Smith Reynolds Johnston. The painting was discovered in an antique store by a grandchild who recognized it from family photos. We are delighted to have it join other portraits of the Reynolds family, but it also provides an occasion to tell the story of Edward's later years, which involve international intrigue, espionage, and heroic escape during a time of global war. It was painted by Frank Owen Salisbury, a highly successful society portraitist known as England's Painter Laureate. Salisbury could be relied upon to discreetly lift a chin or gloss over a stray wrinkle with his fleet brushwork. But Edward Johnston was one sitter who required no flattering. As his school yearbook declared, a handsome face is nature's greatest gift. Catherine Reynolds hired Edward to head up her school in Rinalda Village soon after the end of World War I, in which he had served as a lieutenant. They married two years later. Edward worked briefly for the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and competed as president of the Winston-Salem Polo Team, which played on fields on the Rinalda Estate and throughout the Southeast. The Johnstons' married life lasted only three years, ending in 1924 with Catherine's death a few days after giving birth to their son, Edward Jr. Edward Sr. served as a co-guardian for the four orphaned Reynolds children, then moved to Baltimore with little Edward, remarried, and started a new family. In this undated portrait, he's dressed not in his military tunic or polo jodhpurs, but rather in riding breeches and boots suitable for the hunt. It's one of the loosest and most appealing of this artist's works. Johnston nestles cross-legged into a roundabout or corner chair, appearing relaxed, pensive, and self-assured, a figure of privilege and easy athleticism. Frank Owen Salisbury cut a wide swath among the British aristocracy and American political elite. He was de facto court painter to England's Royal House of Windsor, receiving commissions for dozens of portraits of sovereigns, their households, and favorites like Winston Churchill, who sat more times for Salisbury than for any other artist. Salisbury painted official portraits of Kings George V, Edward VIII, George VI, and Queen Elizabeth II. Among the Winston Churchill likenesses, was the so-called siren suit portrait, in which the wartime prime minister sports his own sartorial invention, designed to slip easily over whatever one might be wearing, if anything, when the siren for an air bombardment sounded. Churchill favored Salisbury's steadfast traditionalism, in which he could detect not a whiff of modernism. Since I assume you're sheltering at home, I refer you to The Crown, Season 1, Episode 9, for the story of a less well-received portrait that went up in flames, literally. In the States, Salisbury received multiple presidential commissions. These included President Calvin Coolidge and First Lady Grace Coolidge, who sat for him on Sapelo Island off the coast of Georgia, where the portraits remained when the entire island was later purchased by R.J. Reynolds, Jr. He painted the official White House portrait of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, for his presidential library, this was requested by President Obama upon his arrival at the White House in 2009 to hang in his cabinet room, and Dwight D. Eisenhower at the dedication of the American Roll of Honor in England. Edward Johnston wasn't the only American civilian portrayed. Other sitters included industrialists with still familiar names, Folger, Kellogg, Mellon, Morgan, Pullman, and Rockefeller. I put those in alphabetical order, but I see now I started with the breakfast foods, <laughs> Folger and Kellogg. I'll close with the story of World War II and Edward Johnston's little-known service when he commanded a branch of the Pentagon 
that was so highly classified it was unknown even to members of Congress. A real-life spy chief, Colonel J. Edward Johnston, was commanding officer of an ultra-secret program called Military Intelligence Service X, or MISX. MISX trained airmen and ground force troops to evade capture, resist interrogation if caught, and make every attempt to disrupt their captors and regain their freedom. Though disarmed and held behind wires, prisoners of war were an important combat asset. They represented a third front in the war against the Nazis, a so-called barbed wire front. A prisoner's only weapons, apart from courage and ingenuity, were coded messages received in letters or heard over BBC broadcasts, and escape aids that were sent into the Stalags within humanitarian shipments. Radio equipment, for example, was hidden within baseballs and board games. Razor blades were magnetized to double as compass needles. And maps and Reichmark bills were glued between the faces of playing cards or under the surface layer of Monopoly game boards. Johnston used his connections with R.J. Reynolds Tobacco to secure camel cigarette packs, which were outfitted with small pieces of machinery that could be assembled into crystal radios. In association with their British colleagues at MI9, MISX supported elaborate tunnel digging stratagems like the one dramatized in The Great Escape. To be a prisoner of war is a melancholy state, Winston Churchill once wrote. You are in the power of your enemy. You owe your life to his humanity and your daily bread to his compassion. You must obey his orders, go where he tells you, stay where you are bid, await his pleasure, possess your soul in patience. For his part, Edward Johnston witnessed the cruelty suffered by prisoners in World War I. It is a measure of the quality of a nation's civilization that Though its captured soldiers may be forced to possess their souls in patience, they should not do so in despair. MIS X aided 737 service members to successfully escape from German POW camps, a tiny fraction of the brave escape attempts that were made. After the war, the Pentagon shuttered the program and ordered all records to be burned. Since Johnston had worked so closely with his British counterparts, he was awarded the Order of the British Empire before his death in 1951, though this too went unpublicized for national security reasons. Similarly, the efforts and inventions of a large number of MISX coders, cryptanalysts, engineers, and technicians went unheralded, their contributions lost in the flames of military secrecy and the fog of war.